Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this weekend's uh, UFC card um, from Charlotte. And the first thing to note is that it is an early card. It's 11.30 in the morning, Eastern time. Uh, it's actually on ABC, and they tried this uh, a couple of times to varying degrees of effect. It'd be nicer if they had a better card, um, but I guess they reserve those for, for pay-per-view. Um, so we're going to go through this card from a DFS perspective. And as usual, we're going to do a separate betting breakdown probably tomorrow. It's a very easy card to analyze, but it's kind of a difficult one to actually play as, as we'll get to. Uh, this past weekend, uh, I had a lot of success in my, my analysis and also quite a bit of success in the, um, in the uh, world championship qualifier where we started off, well, we everybody qualified for it over the last six months. And then we got from a hundred down to 40. And uh, I went through my process for making that lineup. And that was, that got there pretty easily actually. So that's down to 40. And the next round of that is going to be not this weekend, but the following weekend. And where we go from 14 down to, I think 15, that will get you to the live final. Uh, which will be in Jacksonville, June 24th. Uh, nonetheless, we have a 12 fight card again, starting somewhat early. One of the one of the fights, uh, Dern versus um, whoever she was fighting, is off. So we are down to 12 fights. And as I mentioned, it's a very easy card to analyze because there are some very obvious good spots and some very obvious kind of key fights that you want to target. Um, so it's e easy to analyze, but when it comes to actually playing it, it's hard because the, the easy plays are going to be very chalky. And as we'll get to, the easy plays are going to require you to, to play some underdogs that might be somewhat uncomfortable. So let's kind of look at it this way. Um, the, two, the two fights that are the easiest ones to play, or excuse me, the easiest picks are... We'll start with the main event, which is Almeida versus Rosenstrike. Now, it is a um, technically a five-round fight, but it's very unlikely to actually go five rounds. And, and this Almeida play is literally everything that you want in, in, a, in a DFS play. You have a, a huge win odds, you know, minus 500. Um, you have a pretty strong inside the distance prop as well. Um, he's minus like 300 to finish inside the distance. Now, again, that's spread out over the course of five different rounds, but the, the real thing is that his path to victory is 100% DraftKings gold and that he's going to be getting, hopefully for him, a bunch of takedowns and, and control time. So you have the combination of the, of, of the takedowns, the win odds, the inside the distance prop. I mean, it, this is just an absolute smash play. Now, the price uh, is... I mean, it's 9,600. I mean, quite honestly, it should be 10,000, but you don't have $10,000 fighters. They, they have over the last couple of weeks tried to put them, give you 9,700-hour fighter, 9, fighters to challenge you, but those fighters, they made 9,700 weren't even that great plays. This one is a great play. Should be about 10K, but they don't price them up that way. So you want to play this guy like, if you can. Um now, on the other hand, the Rosenstruck side, you know, the good part about playing Rosenstruck on the other side is that, number one, Almeida, I imagine, is going to be extremely popular. So if you do get Rosenstruck home, I mean, you're going to get a lot of leverage over Almeida. And the other thing is that Rosenstruck's path to victory is, is almost certainly going to be KO. So he's going to score well enough at his very reduced $6,600 price to make the optimal if in fact he does get there but the problem is, is that's just very unlikely that he gets there is, is his win odds are you know even accounting for big he's probably about you know 20 percent to win so that's that's not a lot um but if 20 percent of the time a guy's going to be in the optimal it's probably worth considering now i will say also that his ownership is probably going to be not insignificant as well for the reasons I just mentioned. Um, so I don't know if you're going to get him at say 10% ownership to give you some degree of leverage, uh, you know, just based on his 20% win odds. Um, but I think the combination of Almeida being really popular 
and Rosen's troops, uh, wind condition being very you know, conducive to high draft king scoring because of his KO, uh, I, I do think that Rosen's streak is definitely worth playing. So um, these are these are two plays that you definitely want to consider. And Almeida, again, as I mentioned, a very, very just easy, easy play to make. The other easy play to make is you come down the card a little bit, and that's going to be Carl Williams against Chase Sherman. So this one, it has almost as much as the Rosen, as the Almeida play. Um, we'll get to it, but we'll actually we'll do it right now. So Carl Williams is pretty much the same win odds, you know, about minus 400, 500. I mean, maybe a little bit worse. His inside the distance prop is not as good. Um, inside the distance, he's about a minus 120, which is, by the way, that's actually really good. Um, actually minus 10, minus 110, minus 115. That is really good. And consider this, even though Almeida has a stronger win uh, inside the distance prop, remember that Williams, his inside the distance prop is limited to the first three rounds because it's a three round fight. The point being is that if he does finish, he's going to get either a, a, a 90 point, 70 point or 50 point bonus, right? Because that's your bonus for finishing in the first, second, third round where if it's the fourth and fifth round, it's less, okay? Um, so uh, the, 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 the disbursement of the, of the inside the distance prop is, makes him not quite as good of an inside the distance play as Almeida, but certainly close. And, and the other thing about it is that Carl Williams, in a similar way to Almeida, maybe even more so, um, has just incredible DraftKings scoring upside, scoring upside, with respect to his takedown. So that's literally the way he is going to win this fight. Um, if he wins the fight, he's going to be going for a bunch of takedowns. It's not one of those situations where, boy, we have to hope he goes for takedowns. He's going to. I mean, I don't say 100%, but nothing's 100%, but 90 to 95% of the time, he's going to try to win this fight with takedowns. So if, in fact, he wins, it's, he's going to score well. The point being is that even if he doesn't finish, you know, it's almost better if he doesn't finish it, because that means that he probably got a bunch of takedowns and uh, Sherman got up making another takedown happen. So what's better Sherman with four takedowns and a second round finish or 11 takedowns and a decision. It's close, you know? So the point is, is that he's, it's a, it's a smash play on many, many levels. And his price is, you know, pretty reasonable, you know, compared to what he could be. I mean, he's 9,400. And this is what, this is, Actually, pretty, pretty damn underpriced, uh, given all that takedown upside. Um, so, um, similarly to Almeida, I think that Carl Williams is obviously a smash play that you're going to want to try to play. Now, again, on the other side of the of this, you have Sherman, and Sherman is not is is not the same type of leverage because his win condition does not necessarily score a ton. You know, like Rosen Street, if he wins, he's going to probably get a kick. Up. Sherman could win kind of a three-round, ugly, striking-based decision if he can, you know, keep keep Williams off of him. You know, he can win that fight without knocking him out, which means a couple of things. It means is that he can win and not always be optimal. Now, it isn't only a 12-fight card, so the chances that he gets an outright win – at 6,800 and is not optimal is probably slim, but th that possibility does exist. Um, the other thing, though, is that because of that, he's also going to be much lower owned than Rosenstruck. Okay. So I think that kind of makes up for it. And I think that Sherman uh, becomes a, a very playable underdog. Now, again, he's not going to win all that often. This is like the problem, right? He's going to only win about 20% of the time. And the times that he wins, he's not always going to be optimal. But I think his ownership is probably going to be something like 10%, which probably makes him as good of a play. And it's not a great play, right? But probably as good of a play as Rosenstruck. Seeing Rosenstruck, I think, is probably going to be 20%. And the main event underdog is always 20%, not to mention the fact that Rosenstruck does have that, that, that KO upside. So these are the fights that are just kind of easy. And what happens is, is that if you can get both, for example, um, Almeida and uh, Carl Williams in your lineup, 
I mean, that's something you're really going to want to try to do if you can. I mean, especially, I suppose, in cash, because, well, I mean, one of these guys, I wouldn't say probably, but you're going to get 125 out of probably one of these two, you know, and, and if you fade both of them, you're just really asking for trouble, you know. Um, I will say in GPPs, if you can get away with fading both of them somehow and have them both, you know, underperform in some way, then you're certainly going to be extraordinarily well ahead of the field, ahead of the field. But I mean, let's face it, these are the two best plays and I don't think it's particularly close. Now, again, good plays don't make good lineups. I mean, you're going to have to be able to make these guys work, but you see, you still have 77, 50, to spend at each position. So as long as you can play reasonable, reasonably, you'll probably get both these dudes in. Now, again, but when you do this, you're getting to 40% owned. What are these guys going to be? I mean, they have to be, don't they? I mean, with all the, that scoring and, and, and their, their upside and their, I, I can't imagine either of them being less than 30. And I think both could be 40. I think it's possible. Um, now, again, what you have to think about, though, in the terms of lineup construction is if these two are 40, it's because the lineups can work. And that's going to mean that there's probably going to be a popular underdog that makes this all work. And we're probably going to get to that. Um, I really do have a really good feeling about the, at least the process of analyzing this card. I think I really know what these lineups are probably going to look like. So when you're playing GPPs, you probably want to play differently. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So the next fight, which I am, I mean, it just has to be a fight that everybody's going to be keying on. Um, well, there's going to be two of them. One, and the most obvious is going to be the co-main event, right? So, so not Jimmy Walker, Johnny Walker against Anthony Smith. So the price is 8,200 AK, which is, first of all, a fight that people like to look at, a, a price tag. And these two guys are, are, are known guys. They're known commodities. They're, they're, they, they have a lot of finishes. They, they do their thing. It's a fight that people want to play. And then when you, you look at the, at the internals as well, let's take a look at this. We have, it is a pick so there's no you know, money line value, but look at the inside the distance prop even. I mean, you have Smith inside the distance is like plus 170, which is great at his price. And Walker inside the distance is like plus 130. I mean, this is, these are two extremely good price tags. Uh, two extremely good inside the distance props for these price tags. So this fight, with the exception of the main event and the Carl, you know, Carl Williams, is probably going to be, both these guys are going to be really, really popular. I mean, they have to be because their internals look great and you're going to need to save some salary to make the, the Salmeda, Cass Williams, Cass Williams uh, Carl Williams combination work. So uh, I, I do think that the Walker Smith fight is certainly logical, certainly makes sense. And as I mentioned, I mean, tell you what the good plays are. Both of these guys are good plays. Okay. But does that mean that all of your lineups have to look like the one that I'm kind of putting up here? No, because these are this, this whole thing, whether it be Walker or Smith is going to be pretty insanely duped. I would imagine. And you don't want to play obviously GPPs when you're going to, you know, split the prize pool. If, if you even get, are lucky enough to get there, with like 50 other people. Okay. So, but these are the best plays. Um, and then we're going to probably talk about ways to pivot in, in a minute. The, the, the next fight, which I think is going to be at least, I mean, for me, like the most logical. And so I imagine this is what people are going to do is this Stamen, uh, De Silva, Dion Drodge fight. Right. And, and the reason for that is is again the pricing is is such that allows you to get to these two dudes. We'll get to other pretty good fights that challenge that prop proposition, and you kind of know where your where your money is coming from. You know, like if you you look at this these fighters, Stamen um, has a lot of wrestling upside. Okay, so even though his inside the distance prop isn't that great, we'll take a look at this Stamen. Inside the distance is, you know, uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty weak. Um, plus 500. I mean, his, his, his win condition is just ripe with upside as far as wrestling goes. 
So it certainly is a logical play to me. And if it's a logical play to me, it's probably going to be logical for everybody. And then you look on the other side of it, the Andrade, his inside the distance props about plus 270 or so um, after Vic. So maybe, maybe he's not quite as obvious, but I don't know. But as an underdog, I mean, I just feel as though this is just extremely logical. So um, I think that one of these two guys certainly makes a lot of sense. And I think that people are going to play them, you know. Um, does that mean they're bad plays? No, I think they're very, I think they're very good plays. But uh, that's not exactly the end of the story. All right. Let's take a look at some other fights. And I'm going to kind of go in descending order of, of you know, how intriguing they are. Then we're going to get up to some pivots off of these top guys, like kind of in a, in a little bit. Um, let's look at Court McGee versus Randy, Bra Randy Brown or Matt Brown. Matt Brown, okay. So this one sort of reminds me of the um, Andrade Stamen fight because Cord McGee has a very easy path to victory if he opts to to engage in it, and that would be by arrest. Um, a couple of fights ago, five takedowns over Rahi Brahimaj. Fight before that, he had three takedowns against uh, Silva. Okay. So he definitely has that in his back pocket, and 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 um, Matt Brown is not the greatest with the with the takedown defense. So so he could do that and secure a victory. Now at eighty eight hundred, it's not as easy to get there. Excuse me, eighty seven hundred as it is to get there for a statement at eighty five hundred. But it's close enough that I think um, he's he's a he's in a way kind of a reasonable pivot. Off of um, off of uh, statement, okay? Because the same type of style, the same type of thing. The only thing is, you're not a hundred percent sure that statement is good, that 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 McGee is going to go for that, opt for that. Um, he should, but he might not. It's not like the Carl Williams where you know he's going to. Okay, um, it's just a little different. Now let's look at the inside the distance prop. I know Court McGee's going to have a poor one, but let's take a look at the other side of this fight. So Matt Brown, he is, his inside the distance prop is plus 360, which is really just not as good as the Andrade. So he, I don't think this fight is going to be as big of a deal. Um, so I don't think people are going to really quit Matt Brown. It's probably not as good of a play as the Andrade. Um, I think McGee is kind of a decent pivot off of, you know, if you play statement, if you can get to him. You know, you might not be able to get up to Court McGee with that extra 200, but we'll get there. Um, the, the next fight that I want to talk about, we're going, again, we're jumping all over the place, but that's okay. We're kind of putting all this, this whole card together here. Is, is Brian Battle versus Gabe Green? Now, now, the reason why is I'm starting with kind of these like mid-range prices, you know? Um, and so you have 8,300 versus 7,900. And you look at the internals here and they're just, kind of like okay you know like gabe green his inside the distance prop is plus 260 ish i mean fine battle inside the distance not that great so i i just feel that this fight is just going to get a little more popularity though i mean people have been they like playing brian battle um they've heard of these guys the pricing is decent I don't particularly think it's that great of a target, though. Um, I prefer the Andrade Stamen fight, I believe, in this range. Um, but this is certainly okay, you know, especially at 150. Um, let's, and then we are going to get back to the to the high priced guys because it's really important, and that's going to be the that's going to be the important decision is whether you play the uh, Williams and Almeida, one of them, two of them, or zero of them or whether you play the other 9K guys we're going to get to. All right. Uh, let's talk about this women's fight that starts off the card. So we have Tamara Lisboa against Jessica Rose Clark. And, and this could be like the GPP fight. Like, like this could be the one that people just kind of ignore and ends up smashing and just kind of destroys the slate. Okay. It's, it's not 
the greatest as far as internals go, but I've just seen this happen too often. People get just locked into that, say, Stamen fight or locked in to say this, you know, Smith Walker fight. Okay. And next thing you know, this fight goes to decision and bus. And this one battle and green goes to decision and bus. And Stamen and Andrade end up, you know, what what what's gonna end up happening there in in, in the in you know in, in MMA DFS world is that Stamen gets his takedowns and the judges don't like it and give a striking based decision to Andrade. Uh you get Stamen with 55 in a loss. You get Andrade with 62 in a win, you know, and, and, and that bust too. And a fight like this one, this this Lisboa, Jessica Rose Clark one could take the cake. And if you look at the internals here, it's really just not great. I mean, to say the least, you have Clark inside the distance, like plus 450. But you have Lisboa inside the distance, like plus 270 or 280. And again, I, I'm... Um, um, including decisions, I mean, um, the VIG, as far as that analysis goes. And, you know, having a pick -ish type fighter at plus 270 is not bad as far as an inside the distance prop goes. Um, and I promise you this fight is, is not going to be highly owned. Um, and then on the other hand, you have Jessica Rose Clark, and, and she doesn't have the greatest inside the distance prop at like plus 400. But she's got some wrestling ups up, you know? And we don't exactly know what Lisboa's takedown defense is going to look like. So it's a weird fight that that could end up smashing at, when no one's expecting it. So it's not the best plays as far as, you know, what the best plays are. I think from GPPs, I think you want to go after this fight. I really, really do. Um, the pricing is... Is it's just a beautiful pricing model, you know, to go after the statement fight or the um no I actually go after to pivot off the statement fight or to pivot off the Smith Walker fight. Um, hey, you know what? You, you get you get a number here. You know what you can do? You can root for Smith to pull out of the fight, at the, you know, during the fight, and then everybody gets a no contest. It's possible, always possible. Um, so I I definitely like that one. Um, and then the last before we get into the the, the remaining IKs is this other fight, this Jiang Kim versus Mandy Baum. Actually, this does kind of like lead into the 9Ks because this is an 8,900, fight. Um, Mandy Baum doesn't really have takedown upside, nor does she have an inside the distance prop and her um, that's worth mentioning. And the only thing I would say is that, I mean, she's got some, she's got some win at her. You know, she's, she's going to win this fight about, you know, what is that? She's plus 180 or so after big. So, you know, a full 35% of the time. Is she going to make the optimal when she wins? I, I think probably not. Um, but maybe, you know what I mean? Like, if you get these, listen, if you get these bombs to come in, like, if you, first of all, you if you play, say, Almeida and, and Williams, and then you have to shuffle these underdogs, and none of these underdogs get there, you know, and and the one underdog that happens to, to, to emerge victorious is a 75 point Mandy Baum. She could make the optimal. And, and I promise you this Mandy Baum is going to be 10%. Okay. So don't sleep on this fight. Um, now, on the other side, you have Jian Young Kim. She's 8,900. So you can, you need, a, you're going to need a little bit of an inside the distance prop out of her. Um, and it's really poor. I mean, plus 450. She doesn't really have the, the, the wrestling either. The only thing, again, I would say is that given her price and given what's just a couple of hundred above her, she's going to be 10% on max, I think. So I don't know. I think I'm just in kind of one of those moods going into this week where I could tell you what the good plays are. But in the GPPs and certainly in the 150 max, I'm going to be messing around with these women fights. I think I am. I mean, that, even to get the bad, the Brian Battle Gabe Green fight is going to be higher on than any of these women fights, I think. So let's now get to, I think, what's what could be the fun decision is what to do with um, Ian Gary. I get Daniel Rodriguez, Carlos Ulberg versus Ecuador Pateria, and Alex Moreno versus Tim Means. 
and Natan Levy versus Pete Rodriguez because you have to pay for all these all these guys, um, and none of them are going to be look quite as good as those top two, and you can't play all three. Um, so let's just kind of like look at the internals here of all these. So Natan Levy, first of all, he's got you know he's good win, you know he's decent win odds, right? He's only like minus two twenty, right? And that's compared to some of these minus five hundreds that we talked about before. His inside the distance prop is is just okay. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. It might, it's about almost a pick him, which is really, really strong. And the other thing he does have is that takedown upside. Okay? The only thing is it's not quite as good as Carl Williams. It's not quite as good as Jolton Umbria. And his win odds are worse than both of those. And his inside the distance prop is a, is worse than Almeida's and a little bit worse than Williams. So he's definitely a little bit worse than both of those guys. But I think he's going to be much less owned than those guys. So it's an interesting pivot point. And I'll tell you something else. When you start messing around with lineups, I promise you that that, you know, 400 you save. Or let's see what his actual price is. So, um He's 9,100. That, that 300 you save off of um, off of uh, Carl Williams and that 500 you save off Almeida, that might get you to some of these better plays, you know? So I, I'm totally into it, you know what I mean? Like, you can certainly play Levy instead of either of those two high-priced guys. And there are plenty of variations where Nathan Levy outscores them, Okay. Does it happen all the time? No. Does it happen? Is it likely to happen? No. But there's a pro- there's some probability that it does. There's some possible. There's a great possibility that it does. So I think that that he's a very very strong pivot off of a similar style play and a similar upside play. Is it as good? No. But but it's close. Um. Next we have. Uh, let's, let's make sure that we do this in order here. I guess. So Alex Morono against Tim Means. Um, so Alex Morono, he's in that 8,800 price range. He's not quite as easy to get to as these 8,500s we talked about, like Stamen. Um, And he's not quite as good of a play as these 9Ks. When we look at the inside the distance props here, we have um, uh, his win odds are the same as, as, as Levy's, if you want to know the truth, um, pretty close. When you look at the inside distance prop, it's just a little worse. You know, his his uh, Moreno inside the distance is like plus 220 or so. Not great. He doesn't really have a lot of takedown upside, so not great. But he is going to be significantly lower on than all these guys. So I think that 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 he's got to be in the mix of these in the 150 max. And, you know, even at 20 max, I mean, this guy can, can bang, you know. And Tim Means is older, and he could pack it in. Who knows? And you get a big score out of Moreno. Um, who's to say that he doesn't outscore those two? Now it's tougher because those other two, like the the, the Williams and the Almeida, they have such a high floor with those with those takedowns that they're like starting with like hundred points in their wins. Um, where Moreno's got Moreno's got 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 to get there to want. Um, so it's tough, but he's certainly going to be in the mix. And then you have Carlos Olberg. So. We got we got two more to go. We have Ulberg and then the Gary fight. So Ulberg, what he has going for him, okay. First of all, he has huge win odds. He's minus four hundred. He's the same as the others. Okay. The other thing he has going for him is his price. Um, he's a well, he's a little bit cheaper. He's a hundred less than Williams and three hundred less than Almeida. And the other thing he has going for him is he has an insane inside the distance prize. He inside the distance is a plus like 200. That's just really big. Okay. Um, the only problem with him is that he's going to need a first round KO. He doesn't have the, 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 the takedown upside. The only way he gets there is in a second round is if he had some knockdowns. I think. So once again, it's tough. Uh, you're going to need the first round KO. And I'll tell you something else. I've seen him fight. It's not like that guy is going to rush out to get the first round KO. Like he'll, he'll, he'll give it, he'll take it if you give it to him. 
but he's not going, he doesn't like go, go bananas, which is what you want. <laughs> um, so it's a tough play. I, I, I don't know if I can get there, but again, as a pivot off of those two guys, I think it's, you know, I have to get him in like 150, but he's just got to get there in the first round. And that's just kind of tough to do. So I don't know. Um, first of all, one thing I forgot to mention is that, uh, I neglected to bring up uh, the Pete Rodriguez side of the Natan Levy fight. Um, you know, when you look at Pete Rodriguez as a viable underdog, I mean, his inside the distance prop is actually, I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, it's plus 400. So that means about 20% of the time he finishes. So I mean, that's, that's not bad. The only thing I would say is that you don't get the same amount of leverage with him as you do with some of these others. But his win condition, his win odds are a little bit better. So I do think that Pete Rodriguez you know, does kind of fall into the playable underdogs. Um, sorry, I forgot to, to mention that. So in the last kind of fight, the last fight is this um, Gary versus Rodriguez fight. So he, again, he's, you know, 9K plus. Let's take a look. So Ian Gary is... 9,000. So at 9,000, you're going to need, you know, inside the distance prop of about pick them, right? Or uh, an insane amount of takedown upside. Now, he doesn't have the takedown upside. We'll take a look at the inside the distance prop. And he's, um, I mean, it's just it's really not that great. I mean, Gary inside the distance, like plus 200. I mean, in the absence of a good, in, of a good takedown upside, this is really, really poor. So he's probably going to have to, take a back seat and the thing is is that because of this because he's probably going to be somewhat low owned um i don't think rodriguez is probably the idea as far as big underdogs to target because you're not getting that that leverage with him now again if you had a great inside the distance prop um yeah but we'll take a look at it i mean it's extremely poor i mean plus 700 and he doesn't really have that takedown upside either so i think this fight is going to end up being sort of a fade so as I mentioned, like from, from an analysis perspective, I mean, this is easy, right? You, you have, let's go back to this. I mean, you have Almeida and Carl Williams, best plays. Walker Smith, definitely the best key fight. And then probably either somebody from De Silva, Dandraj, or Stamen um, as another, maybe he, he'd be a decent underdog. Um, and then people are going to probably just kind of pick at that yeah, that Randy Brown fight or that, that, that Matt Brown fight's fine. The Gabe Green fight's fine, whatever it is. I think Rodriguez is kind of a decent, uh, Pete Rodriguez, decent underdog. But I'm telling you, if you really want to get nasty with this card, you, you won't play both of them in the same one. Um, and you'll use, you know, maybe Natan Levy as a 9K. You'll use Alex Morono at 8,900. Okay. Um, and then if you want to get extra nasty, you won't play the, the Walker Smith. Fight. You'll, you'll take a, you'll take a, a, a shot at Lisboa, Jessica Rose Clark. And that's nasty because it's you know, unlikely to get there. But if it does, you're going to get a big amount of ownership leverage over, over everybody else. And then also the, the John Kim, Mandy Bob, boy, if you get away with that, I mean, who knows? I mean, who knows what could happen there? Um, so uh, I do think that it's a sneaky, sneaky good GPP win 100,000 by yourself type car. Um, even though it's only 12 fights, there's a couple of, 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 of ways to get different immediately that I don't think people are going to have anything to do. Like if you wanted, like if you X'd out like both Almeida and Williams, then you don't even have to worry about, about about upside you know what i mean like because well you you do because you're gonna have to help score these guys but if those two fights bust they might you know they, they just might and then you could get one of these other two all these other pivots to, to come in there you couldn't really win this hundred thousand or two hundred whatever it is by yourself even though it's a 12 fight play. um anyway uh I know this went really, really long, but I thought it was important to do it this way. We're going to do a betting breakdown uh, either tonight or tomorrow. But until then, this is Sheets wishing everybody good luck for the early post time of Charlotte.